So welcome here. You know, heaven has invaded this place already. A million of them came with me. I don't know if y'all saw the, the broadcast where it talked about where I went to D.C. I did go to D.C. By, by command of the Father to go there and deal with the wicked and the evil that was there, both spiritual and physical. And he sent a million of the hosts with me there to do his job that he wanted done. And then he let me keep them all after that. So I have some, I have some new ones. I, I know that they're the new ones because I don't recognize them. I've had the others so long, I recognize what a lot of them look like. And um, you can sit down. I'll forget to, to ask you to sit down. <laughs> How many people have never heard me speak before? Can I see your hand, anybody? Wow. In person. Yeah, in person. Well, it's too late now. You're already here. <laughs> I used to say that to people back in the day before anybody heard any of the stuff that God gave me, and they're like, what does that mean? You're going to find out, but it's going to be good. It'll be God. You, you know, you can't stay the same if you've heard what God has to say. Revelation comes from him, not man. Man can receive it. Man can share it all day long, but it comes from him. That's where it comes from. And we need revelation a lot more. We de uh, definitely need information. We need, we need wisdom. We need understanding. Please, if you have a lot of wisdom, you're going to need understanding. That's scriptural in case you didn't know that. And all you're getting of wisdom, get understanding. What that means is get knowledge of the Holy One. That's what understanding is. Knowledge of the Holy One, it comes from heaven. And I was introduced to heaven by Jesus Christ. I'd always imagined what it looked like, and I had a lot really good, um, just because I, ha I have a great imagination. You know, when you're one to 15, you got to come up with something to keep them busy and keep them happy, right? And so I did bring some stuff up here to give away, and I'll probably do that first, but I would like to talk a little bit about it. Anything I have or I've written... I didn't pick the title. I didn't pick the image. They didn't come from me. Even the chapter titles inside these books didn't come from me, but I'd had, at this point, I'd had quite a few years revelation of being in heaven, being caught up to heaven and shown many part, places in heaven. And so the Father had sent Jesus back to see me in person. So this was an in-person uh, revelation from Jesus Christ of what they wanted me to do. They took me to heaven many times, showed me a lot of places, uh, didn't ever ask me if I wanted to go because I gave permission to do whatever they wanted from the beginning. Since I've known them for a very long time, I got born again when I was four years old. Being a seer, that meant I saw Jesus step inside of me. So if you wonder if he does that, yes, he does. He does. He lives in us. And he's with you all the time. And yes, he's in heaven, sitting at the right hand of the Father also. He's also sometimes on the earth also. Because the triune Godhead, they have the ability to be in many places at the same time. And they know everything everywhere all at the same time. Nothing is hidden or kept from them. They've been from the beginning. What does the beginning mean? They've been from the beginning to the end and the end to the beginning. The beginning of existence which was before when the earth was made. So before the earth was made, there was stuff going on in heaven, a lot of stuff, much, much stuff. So I've been to BT, which is before time. Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. When he did that, that's when time began. Time itself began. Before that, they didn't keep track of time. They didn't have to keep track of time. Why? Because they made time. <laughs> time came from them. They didn't come somewhere in time. People said, well, did they appear somewhere in time? No, it came from them. If that does something to your mind, I hope so. Because that happens a lot when I'm giving, when I'm sharing revelation. You hear things for the first time. And actually, a lot of times you actually get what it means. And there is a lot of revelation that means a lot of things. Most of it definitely would line up with the Word of God. Because guess who wrote the Word of God? They had it written. And when you realize how it operates, you understand why your gift is important. 
You are a gift. Everyone here is a gift. You carry a gift given to you by God before you were sent to this earth. And knit together in your mother's womb, that gift was put in you, whether it's making the best cookies, the best barbecue sauce, uh, maybe creating amusement parks, you know, um, all kinds of equipment, all kinds of houses, whatever it is that you made, that you make with that gift you have. Maybe it's music. You create music. You create all kind of fun things to do, uh, wonderful places to go to. Uh, that's a gift you have. Maybe you play the best instruments. Maybe you can play it but never actually used it. In heaven you will. Because the way God designed your gift that is irrevocable, he's not talking about spiritual gifts. You don't need to get people saved in heaven. It's too late. You don't need to heal anybody in heaven because they don't need healing, okay? They still go to Word University and Royal University in heaven. They probably have um, some understanding of it, but you see all of it. You see the revelation on the entire Word of God is taught to you by the ones who wrote the books in the Bible. Wouldn't that be awesome? You get to, you get to hear firsthand from the one who wrote those words. For Jesus Christ, who was called the Word and the Father. Everybody loves to go to school in heaven. It's not boring. The furniture is not hard to sit on. <laughs> they thought of every amazing thing connected with you because you're his sons and daughters. You're the father's sons and daughters coming home. Everyone in here is family. Turn around and say hi to your family. I love you. Come to my house. I will take your pictures for free. I'm a photographer. <laughs> and show you the best places to eat yummy stuff in heaven. Your families who live there have been collecting information on places to take you when you get there. They're not up there forgetting you, ignoring you. Oh, no, they're not. You'll have a very long list of places to go and see. King David always gives everybody a chariot ride through the sky on his own chariot with his red hair and his pointed beard. <laughs> and he is quite a character. So that's something you can all look forward to. How about that? The people who make the best food down here on earth, that's their gift. They'll make it in heaven. It won't cost anything to eat it. It's all free, gluten-free. <laughs> it don't taste like it's sugar-free, but it probably is. <laughs> So, yes, you eat in heaven. What about the marriage supper of the Lamb? Do you think you weren't going to eat? <laughs> People don't eat in heaven because they have to. They eat in heaven because they love to. You have guests all the time visiting your home. A lot of guests. The prophets will come. The disciples will come. You'll hear a lot of the stories that were never put in the Bible that they'll tell you. <laughs> Jesus developed a sense of humor when he left heaven and came to earth to live. <laughs> he learned how to pray really hard because his daddy did not make it easy for him. Not with those 12 men. <laughs> Why do you think the women followed him all the time to take care of him, to make whatever they were going to eat, you know, help make sure they had a place to sit, whatever they're going to do? Uh, women are easier thing for Jesus to to get to do things because, you know, we just love him. We just love him. We don't question anything. We just, whatever he asks, oh, yes, we're going to do that. We're going to so do that. But I know that you all will love him. Everyone in heaven loves Jesus more than anyone else up there. And, yes, if you ever wonder, you get to spend time with the Father, you get time with Jesus Christ, and you'll get time with the Holy Spirit. They'll make sure you get time with them. They're not going to forget you when you move up there. There's so much to do up there you wouldn't, you know, sometimes you wonder, why did you ever not think it would be like that? Everybody will sing and dance, start practicing. Not the singing part. <laughs> I promise you, I'm not going to sing. <laughs> and the only dance I ever teach is the Revelation dance, so I'm taking a break from that right now. <laughs> I can make my staff get up here. My husband's going to run in about two minutes. <laughs> They've all had to do it, trust me. But the father has such a great sense of humor, like, I hope your dad did. I had an awesome dad. My dad was amazing. 
He wanted a big family. My mom learned to love a big family. <laughs> we didn't think she was ever going to stop having them. <laughs> that meant more dishes, more food to make. And guess what? All of our friends came to our house. That meant we had about 30, 40 kids all the time, all the time in the yard, you know. That's what that meant. The more the merrier. Yay! I was the one out of the 12 that would like time alone. I got a hammock given to me. I put it in the furthest corner of the yard, tied it between the post and the tree, and I would just cover myself up with a hammock <laughs> and think about life later on. <laughs> so God didn't make it easy for me either, but what I'm doing now makes it all worth it. To know the heart of God the way he thinks, the plans he has, the promises he gives us, they're all real. And our future is the greatest future ever. All the stuff you've gone through that's been hard or not easy, it'll be like dust one day. This is a temporary time. It really is a temporary time. Because you're about to step into greatness on this earth. And the world will even remember you when you're gone because of the great things you'll be doing for God. This is the first book he asked me to write. I didn't know I'd write books in the beginning. But I have a photographic memory. I am a sketch artist, and I'm a photographer. So I do really well in remembering a lot. So what I talk about in these books, it really was there. I really saw it. It's very real. And the stories that I had um, picked to put in here, there's always a chapter that talks about the encounters I had and where God had things to share with people. They had loved ones pass away. My pastor at the church I, I went to, I still call myself a member there. Um, they were amazing. The things that the Father, he knows everything about you. He really does. The places I was taken to see. This cover was not des it wasn't designed by me. It was asked for the Father. He wanted a wing of the living creature on the cover of the book, so when people looked at it in the bookstore, they know that was different. And then turn around and say, wow, she's got pink hair. Well, they knew that would be different, too. So here's the cover called Revealing Heaven. I did not pick the title. I didn't pick it. They picked it, not me. I came up with a tour guide to heaven. I mean, it was long. It was because I'm a detailed person. Whatever I decided I was going to use, the, you know, uh, tour guide to heaven, the journey to heaven. And they said, how about revealing heaven? How does that sound? <laughs> Two words. I went, that sounds really good. We'll use that one. He said, I want the cover on the first book green. The second one is going to be blue. And the third one will be purple. I'm writing book three right now. Most of them have, I think, like, what, 12 chapters, something like that. I'm trying to remember how many they how many chapters they had in there. I don't even know if I put chapter titles. There's chapter titles. And he said, no, you're going to have 24 chapters, and you're going to have a bonus one. The first thing I do when I write the book is I do all the illustrations. It takes the longest. So I sketch all of them. I give them to my very gifted artists. And um, so these were scenes. These were things that I actually saw in heaven, or, or, or I'll say they meant something to people who were caught up to heaven. Um, here's just a very basic, not full out whole illustration. I don't know if you can see it or not. You may be able to see it. There's some back there on the book table. This is a throne room, not the 70 foot up throne. People are dancing before the throne, worshiping before the throne of God. That's what that is. You can see the rainbow uh, coming out of the Father. It flows out like the northern lights. It's not just a stagnant rainbow sitting there doing nothing. It has life in it. It flows from the inside of him, so everybody lived inside of the Father. That's why you're called his offspring. And they would jump on these bands of the rainbow and ride them just outside the throne and back inside the Father. It was like a fun thing that they did. It was just a bunch of little spirits, but they were, they were already persons. They were already people. And God picked him. This is um, Ramey. I met him in the, one of the nurseries of heaven, holding a little baby that didn't make it, but will one day be with their parents when they come home to heaven. They are believers, and they'll, they'll have that baby back to finish raising them. It'll stay very little on purpose. So it doesn't matter if it's been 50 years, 60 years. When they get to heaven, they're going to have that baby to finish raising. 
And this is one of the pictures, the things I gave away last night. It's another place in heaven. It's called the portal. It's where everybody goes to watch their loved ones and families on the earth. And um, it has got an open portal. See that round circle? Can you see that or not? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the columns on both sides. Well, the, at the, there's media screens at the bottom of the columns. And on one side of them, there's two of them. You know when someone's getting born again, you never miss your family member getting born again. On the other side, when they, your faces, their faces appear, they're coming home to heaven. So everybody knows when their loved one's coming home to heaven. Isn't that awesome that God lets you know that? So these have a lot of illustrations in them. They have encounters that God took me on. Places in heaven, many places in heaven. Um, there's a nursery wall. There's all kinds of things in here that represent heaven. And so this is the first one. I'm going to give these away. This is number one. And uh, there's a letter. <laughs> Sometimes if I say, I'm going to add a letter. So you got to take this letter. You're going to add it to the book. So there's things added because he wanted them added. And uh, we've got them in quite a few languages. We're, we're adding a lot of man. I know that someone I've met recently wants to translate it in Mandarin Chinese. And my answer is yes. Is Yes. Yeah, the father said, yes, they need it. <laughs> Let them do it. So I, I had met them a couple times, but he actually answered me this time. He said, you tell them I said yes. There's also a bunch of qu questions and answers. We took like 300 questions around everywhere. I mean, everywhere in different states and different places and asked people questions. Um, and, then they, and then they said, um, well, anyways, I'm not going to read those. <laughs> it's taking too long. Anyway, I know I, you think I'm rambling. I probably am. I need to get down to the business because I'm going to talk about the now time of God. Yeah, yeah not, not 50 years from now, not in the past, not a year ago, the now time of God that we stepped into just a little while ago. And so this one is book two. It also has, um, there's another picture of me, my, my, my lovely pink hair. And this one bookstore said, well, we'll put them in there. They said, but we're not going to let them see the cover. We're going to let them see the back. I went, well, that's perfectly fine. So I left the books there. And they found out <laughs> they didn't just get the wing of the living creature on there. They got me with my pink hair. And I did do, the first thing I did was I spoke in bookstores. And some said, well, you can speak outside, not inside. I have no problem speaking outside. I'm sure the host will enjoy being outside. There'll be more room for them. I didn't bother telling them what that was. I went to this one place that was owned by somebody who wasn't even a Christian. He said, I'll let you sell your books. You know, I'm a sinner, and uh, I probably could use a little bit of that um, information in your books, but I know that it will sell well. So, yes, you can come anytime you want to and do a book signing. <laughs> I sold a lot of books to that man. I'm praying he got born again. <laughs> this is one of the first quotes the Holy Spirit gave me to make a product out of, and yes, I am a for-profit business. I hope everybody here who has a business makes a profit. Say amen. amen. Say, I receive that. I receive that. Because business is coming to the body of Christ. Amen. Jesus said it's perfectly fine. He did a lot of business while he was going around places. He had a lot of clients. Those sinners he sat with at the tables and ate with, they were clients of his. He made stuff for furniture, all kinds of other stuff. In carpentry, he did that. So he is, God sent him, yes, he sent him as the savior of the world, but he also sent him as a businessman. And so this is one of the products, I don't do demons. Now, if you think that doesn't make a statement, no matter where you take this cup, you better check it out. Because someone's going to ask you, what does that mean? That means I do the host of heaven and heaven. I do not do demons, nor hell, nor anything they represent. So this is my testimony. That's what that is. This is a place that actually exists in heaven. This is Christmas town. It is a living snowman who is alive. We're talking about heaven, people, not earth. I know you can build things out of snow. What happens to them? They melt. In heaven, they never melt. And yes, they come to life. The little girl on here, is, her name is Precious. She is a child that doesn't, didn't make it to birth. And so she loves to be in Christmas Town. And this is her snowman that she built. And Iggy is her iguana who's hanging on the side of the sled right there. And so God said, I'm going to start making cups for kids of places that they love to go to in heaven. This represents winter. 
I think I told you last night that God took four of his favorite places in heaven, took a shadow of them from heaven, and made them a season on the earth. That's why you have spring, summer, fall, and winter, because it represents places in heaven. So this represents a place in heaven. This is our first one that we made. Kids love this. They love it. So the next one that we'll be making will be fall from the Mountain of Spices. It talks about it in the Bible. I've been to the Mountain of Spices. It is absolutely amazing. The leaves are huge. I mean, they're like three foot across one leaf. The leaves never fall off. They never die. It's very high up in heaven. The Mountain of Spices goes up there. When you get to the top and look down, you see the Valley of the Falls, over 100 waterfalls in this valley. People go up there and have their own waterfall, their mansions built right on the edge because you can't die, remember? Your house rotates, so you always have views of this place up there. You get your own, uh, not a water slide, you get a diving board. You dive off of the edge, down in the waterfall, and ride it all the way down. <laughs> Would you like that? Who wants one like that? Well, I'll say, make sure, Father, you make a note of that. Can you imagine bringing your, your best friend comes home to heaven and you take him to visit? Come see what we have out here. Well, why don't you lean over just a little bit more? Wee! <laughs> ah! 200 feet down. Then they hit the water. Yay! I'll do it again. You have unending entertainment right there at your own home. That's a real place in heaven. Remember, write it down, Valley of the Falls, Father, I would like that. I, I probably would like Mountain of Spices, but I don't know where I'll be living in heaven. I know I will be living there. I know I'll have a Coke icy machine. Come see me. You get a free one all the time. <laughs> Although everything you eat is free. <laughs> so I want to go ahead and give these away. So where's her? This is book one. So we're going to give this away to whoever, whoever can yell the loudest. Well, make sure you take book two to the other side of the room. If I can find it. One more thing. I'll show you one more thing. Now, I know everybody probably, just, just one minute. Just wait. Hold on. It never worked when I said that to my siblings either. Okay? So, the mansions up there are unspeakably amazing. And everybody pictures a little, you know, like the White House. Is that kind of a mansion? No. You know why? Because everybody here is different. And God has you pegged. He knows what you want. He knows what you would love. And I happen to know they have sky mansions. You step into this big column at the end, you say, fifth floor. And you get up to that, it zips you right up there, okay? You also have, um, I'm trying to remember what you call them, you know, and the little spaceship things that they had. In the, what do they call them in Star Wars? A what? Yes, it's a star cruiser. That's what it is. Yes, you have one. Yes, it runs on light. You never have to put gas in it. You don't have to have a license to fly it. And you're not going to have accidents anyway. And you can't see this one because it didn't print real clear. But anyway, here's the column. And you go up this column, and it has all these floors on it. You see everything outside all the way around, the, uh, around this whole entire mansion. And people who want something like that, that's what you're going to get if you like that thing. So anyway, that's one of the things that's in here. There's a lot more in here. So Anna, make... <laughs> That side of the room. Yeah. Go, 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 go. All of this stuff is made in America, just so you know that. 
So I'm going to let you give away I Don't Do Demons Cup. We now have uh, doormats available to say I Don't Do Demons. <laughs> that also starts a lot of conversations when they come to your door and they go, hmm. <laughs> Should I come in? <laughs> Two kids came by for something one year. I'm trying to remember, I don't remember what it was, but it was down there in the game. They were probably like, I don't know, um, I think they were like eight or nine or something like that. And they were like, hmm. Well, I think I can come in, but my sister probably can't come in at all. <laughs> and she's like, what are you saying? <laughs> Highly offended at her brother. Ah. I said, be nice. You'll probably live right next to him in heaven. So here's I don't do demons, and this should be the motto of every Christian right here. Just take it. And then I'm going to quickly send out one of the kids' cups. I'm hoping by this next year we'll have a, a, we'll have um, spring, summer, fall, and winter. All four of them will be ready, so that we can have places. You'll see the mountain of spices. You'll probably possibly see the valley of the falls on his cup. Butterfly fields. I mean, there's all kinds of places there. Can see. So here you go. So we've got. Here's another one. So this little girl's name is Precious. Her iguana's name is Iggy. And it says, happy birthday, Jesus, on this cup, because they go there to celebrate his birthday. To Christmas town. Before I give this last one away, I'm going to read. How many people have never read this book? Every one of these plays, everything that happened here is absolutely true, totally true, absolutely true. You learn a lot about the Father, how he operates, what the throne room looks like, what people do in heaven, how heaven operates. The place is built there for all of you to get to enjoy yourself in your life. The things that you can absolutely do and that God uses you for up there is amazing. This is going to be a, more like, this is like one of the stories that I would put in here. And God arranged every one of these things to happen. I did not arrange any of it. He did all this. So he arranged me. I worked at our, helped at our church for many years, probably well over 20 years. And at one point I was doing hospitality, which meant I cooked everything. We had a 5,000 member church. I'm not talking about like 500 people. And they had special events. I cooked the food. I don't like cooking food. I don't clean, I don't like cleaning up the food. I don't mind eating the food. And so here I am having helped to raise this tribe up. That meant that you did dishes like, you know, here's 150 dishes a day you did, 80 loads of laundry a week you did, and hung them up on clotheslines in Florida. It rains every 15 minutes. We learned how to, that's why I do weather warriors, if you wondered. I learned how to pray against the rain when I was growing up so it wouldn't drown the clothes on the clothesline. So when, the, when Jesus came to me, he said, the Father and I are going to start revealing heaven to this earth. We're tired of the myths and the mysteries given by the enemy and by people who don't want people to go there. So we're going to show the truth. We're going to take you on tours of heaven. So you have to say, you're going to go, yes, I'm, I'm, yes, I will go. We'll take you without notice sometimes, but you'll just be gone. You'll be here one second, gone. We'll take you in your spirit. Your body will be left behind. If people try to talk to it and it doesn't answer, just tell them you'll be back in a few minutes. Leave a sign that says, I'll be, my husband will literally look at me and say something and say, I'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs> and so he, he learned that was the way it was going to be, and he has not stopped doing it. Okay, we're talking about in the 80s when he first started taking me. He started taking me on tours of heaven. And so this is how one of them would happen. Uh, I was asked one day by the pastor's wife if I would help clean the house of someone who had just hosted a funeral at our church. Now, a lot of people came and had their funerals there because it was so big. If they had a lot of friends or a lot of family, they'd always try to book their, their family's funerals there. So we didn't know a lot of the people who came there and had funerals. This was one of the instances. That somebody had come and entertained guests from out of town and had hosted their funeral there. 
And so the pastor's wife was a friend of theirs and wanted to bless them. So they asked my mother and I, who my mother helped do the hospitality thing, like cook all the food. We went and bought it. We prepared it. We set, we set it up in beautiful plates and platters and decorated the room while everything was in. So it was a big deal, probably like 15 hours getting ready for one of them. And so um, so they, we, we had not gone to the, done the funeral of this person. We hadn't done it at all. So we didn't know these people. But she said, would you mind going and on this day and cleaning their house for them? I think it would, would have been blessed them a lot. So they, they were from the other side of town. So mom and I went on the appointed day and we started cleaning the house. I went out front by into the room where the fireplace was, and I was cleaning. She was cleaning in the kitchen. And all of a sudden, I hear the Lord speak to me. This is normal for me. Okay, I heard him speak when I was real young. So I'm 70-something. Don't tell me it can't happen because it does. And he said, I want you to give a message to Melody. And I said, who's Melody? I'm dusting the fireplace. That is Marissa's mom. Um, Marissa was killed in a ski accident, and her mom is really suffering from grief. So I want to give her a message about where she is in heaven. She's asking me. This is Jesus. She's asking me, where is my daughter? Uh, her daughter was, I guess, she was um, a young teenager. And she served God her whole life. In every school she went to, she was a leader for young people in school. She mentored them and everything. She was a great uh, young person precious person. I didn't know her at all. This is the first time I heard her name when Jesus was saying this to me. He said, she's living with her great grandfather in heaven. I want her mother to know that. And at that moment, he caught me up to heaven. I wasn't in front of the fireplace. I literally was in heaven walking. That's always a distraction because I'm walking and the pebbles are jumping up and down singing worship to Jesus Christ and they have faces. The further I walk, the flowers begin to, to sing. I'm walking between the flowers and they're singing each other. The trees are waving at me. The birds are saying something as they pass me. So I'm like this, and Jesus goes, you need to get up there. You see those three people? Get up there. Get behind them. I want you to hear what they're saying. These three people don't see me. I would explain people in heaven be chasing me down the street. When you get back to earth, would you please tell my mom or so-and-so, so I love them. That's what they'd be doing. So I got closer and closer, and I could hear what they were saying. And I saw this girl. It had to be. The teenager. She was a teenager. And she was with someone who was older, not real old looking. Remember her grandfather? He probably looked like he was in his early 30s. And so she was talking to her grandfather. I wish I could tell my mom how wonderful it is here. I wish my mom could see that I'm living with you, my grandfather. It'd make her feel so much better. I wish she knew I was a youth leader in heaven. She went down this whole list of things. I wish she knew that one day I'll see her again. And we prepare things for her when she gets here that we can do fun things together. And then all of a sudden, I was back in front of the fireplace. Went, wow, that was crazy. Mom, get in here. I just went to heaven. I had this encounter. I saw, I saw this young girl, and she was talking to her grandfather. And, and, and I heard a lot about what was going on in her life there. And she said, well, are you going to get to share it? I said, I'm, I'm sure he, he wouldn't have taken me if I wasn't going to be able to share it. And so I, I kept thinking about it all day long. We finished cleaning her this uh, place, and then we went. I think the person's home that we were in actually was related to that young girl because remember we said she had hosted a funeral. And so we went back home. We kept talking and talking. I said, I finally called the pastor's wife. I went, I had an encounter in heaven, and I saw a young girl, and she was with her great-grandfather. Um, I, didn't, I didn't know either one of them, but, but I knew that they were related to somebody named Esther that we, we cleaned her home. And I went, um, he wants me to tell her mom some things from her so she'll know where she's living. And um, Pastor Sharon said, don't you worry, I'll take care of that. I'll get back with you. So she called me back later, and um, they knew who this person was. I didn't know who this person was. They said, yes, you, you can go ahead and meet her. Here's her phone number. You call her because that's the proper thing to do. I'm sure she's going to want to know your encounter in heaven. And she says, oh, just let me know later what happens. And so I did call. I called her. But remember, I needed the girl's mom. So I called Esther. That was a, that was a, uh, Melanie was Esther's daughter. And Marissa would have been her granddaughter. So I told her. I met her. She didn't want to meet me. You know, some people think you're kind of weird if you tell them something like that. But she was so hungry she said, 
I'll, I'll meet you outside the mall at a bench, at a table with a bench, and I'm going to meet you right outside the mall. She said, I, I don't know why I'm even doing this, but I'm so desperate I wanted to dig my daughter up and hold her. If God gave me this opportunity, then I have to hear it. So I'm like, okay. And so I went by myself, and um, I had pink hair. <laughs> and I said, hi, I, I don't know you. I know you live on the other side of the river. You know, I, I go to New Life Christian Fellowship, and and we we have a lot of encounters with people who've lost people, so... I know this is strange to you, but it's not strange to me. I have belonged to Jesus Christ for many, many, many years. I'm a seer, so I see things in the spirit. And yes, while I was in your, um, your mother's home, cleaning it from the funeral service, the funeral luncheon, I, I had an encounter with Jesus, and he took me to heaven, and I saw your daughter. Well, she almost couldn't handle that. She goes, what does she look like? She has strawberry blonde hair. She had blue eyes, and I said she was real pretty, and um, she was excited to be there, and she said, she was talking to her great-grandfather, because I knew that she was living with him. That got her undone right there. She was living with her great-grandfather, and uh, I said she said she missed you so much, she wished she could let you know where she was living, who she was living with, that she also had a leadership uh, a position in heaven, and she's like 13. She's over all the youth in heaven. How about that? 13 years old. And I did know this. They were beginning to plan the marriage supper of the Lamb, their part of the supper, the, of the celebration. It wasn't going to happen for a while, but that was going to be her job, which is why he took her home. That's why he took her home, she said. Well, I know that, I know she would want to stay with her great-grandfather. Yes, she has strawberry blonde hair. She has blue eyes. And yes, she mentored everybody in her school. In all three schools, they closed the schools and bust them to her funeral because they loved her so much. She was just shaking. I said, well, your daughter's got a beautiful heart, too. And she did care. And she, I know that you asked Jesus because he told me you did. I did ask him where she was. I said, so he's telling you. I said, your daughter is in charge of the youth in heaven. And she, then she started to cry again. Her whole life, her plan was to be in business that was about the youth. I said, well, guess what she ended up with? Her gift using it in heaven for all the youth. It was one, one thing after another her, um, that Marissa had said, when I see my mom again, I'm going to kiss her on both cheeks. That was something else she said. And I told Melody what she said. She goes, every time... I'd pick her up from school. She'd kiss me on both cheeks. So everything God told me, everything he had shared with me was something she would know and recognize. That was her daughter I was, being, I was with in heaven. I saw in heaven. And so it was, a, it was quite a beautiful experience. And, so, and then I told her, I don't know what you think about this, but when I saw her with her great-grandfather, he was taking her to ride on a roller coaster called The Rush, heaven's biggest roller coaster. And she said, my daughter loved roller coaster rides. I said, that's where she was going. And so the other thing, when I was all done sharing with her at the, at the park, she said, I, there's nothing else for me to say except that I know you're telling the truth. I don't know you. You don't know me. And yet you describe my daughter in detail. You said things that she did all the time. You said what she wanted for her destiny. You said that she was with her great-grandfather, which he was, I found out he was a pastor in the city who'd passed away. Who knew my pastor? He was my pastor's dad. And this was my pastor's family. He will tell you all day long, I didn't lie. I never lied. He knows that I had been to heaven. He knew that that was his father when I said her great-grandfather. They all did. Later on, they all met with me and said they didn't, his whole family met, the pastor's family, didn't know what, some of them didn't believe me. My pastor believed me. He said, you never knew who they were because they lived way across the river. You didn't know any of those people, so God blessed all of us by letting us know what she was doing in heaven. And then her, her grandmother, when I met um, Esther, that was the house that I was cleaning, and nobody was at the house the day we were cleaning. She met with me later and said, I have to tell you something. She said that um, 
the day after Melody had passed away, she said she found a journal in her daughter's bedroom that she kept when she was seven. Remember, m remember Marissa was 13 now. She found this journal, and so she called, Melody called her mom, Esther, was, whose home I was in, and she read this to her. She said, I have to tell you what Marissa had written in that journal one day and never showed any of them. This is what she wrote in that journal. October the 3rd, 1995, she wrote these words in the journal. Once I dreamed that Jesus took me up to heaven early, and I got to see my great-grandfather early. I got to ride all kinds of roller coasters. I did see tons of mansions. It was wonderful. But when Jesus took me up, he only gave me a peak. So as fast as a roller coaster, I went back down to earth. That page is absolute concrete proof that proves that I was in heaven. I didn't know any of them. That proves to you that they have roller coasters in heaven. That proves to you you get to visit and stay with your family members. That proves to you that you will not miss the destiny that God always had for you. Amen? So they gave me a copy of that page for this book. So everybody who reads it is going to know heaven is real. And this is the reality of being there, some of the things you get to do there. Her mother never forgot that. And they told her mother, and I, so I prayed for her mother outside the mall. She said she was my only child. Uh, she had been abandoned by her husband when she had Marissa and raised her by herself. She said, they said, I can't have any more. I went, I'm going to lay hands on you. You're going uh, you're gonna, to you're gonna have children. The next time you get married, you're getting children. So I laid hands on it and imparted to her the, the birth, gift of birth. She had two twins, boy and girl, both with red hair, both with blue eyes. And they are caught up to heaven and see Marissa. Isn't that a beautiful story? So this book isn't just so you will know there is a God. You're going to know he has a home called heaven, which is where your citizenship is right now. Think on things above, right? Your citizenship is there. That's where your heart should be, thinking on heaven, preparing for that for yourself. When you die, you are not lost as a believer. Stop saying you lost your loved one and start saying they moved to heaven. Yeah. Amen? So those are some of the things that are in here. Here's the last one. We do have more books out there if you want some. There are some more up, sit up. They're out there on the table. There's some more cups out there on the table. And uh, next time I come, I'll have to bring a big truck. <laughs> Joan is one of the best promoters of Christian's products. She really pushes me. The last time I came, I didn't have any. I knew I was in trouble. <laughs> I was in big trouble. <laughs> That's what we had all those pictures printed and gave them away <laughs> so you could have something to take with you. Heaven is the most phenomenal place. We go to repair a place for you that you might be there with us also. No eye has seen nor, nor heart nor, or my, imagine in the mind of man, but God has prepared for those that love him, except or unless it is by the Spirit of God. That scripture right there tells you it is absolutely possible to see and know and visit the place called heaven. Say amen. amen. So if you would like a trip, tell him. Say, Father. Father. Jesus Christ. We would like to see your home called heaven. Since we'll be moving there one day, we expect to go. Thank you very much for doing it. Amen. You have not because you asked not, you just asked. These are beautiful, wonderful days. I'm sure people think that's the craziest thing I've ever heard in these days. Not if you know God. And I don't know everything about him, but the part I do know about him, I know he has his own plans, and this is not the devil's time. The devil wanna be leader, 
wants it to be his time. That's why he's trying to take over. They're wasting their time. They're wasting the millions and billions of money that is being thrown away trying to do evil, wicked things. It's a waste. That's why it says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just and the righteous because they're not going to get to keep the rest of it, everybody. These are wonderful days of glory, of the fire of God, baptism in fire, which I have seen. I've had a small experience of it. It comes in and burns everything off the walls of your heart. Anything that you saw that maybe you didn't want to see or that wasn't your job or your plan to even see them, things that experienced you or you had experienced, it wipes them off. They're not even there. It's like they never were there. It burns in a way of burning a fire that feels amazing. And it will come in here and go out the top of your head. Holy Spirit will be very much involved in baptism and fire. The glory of God, which is the light of God that shines from his very being, his very person. You can see him on the throne, but you have to look through that fire and through that glory to see him. If you look really close, if you get close in heaven, you'll see his eyes are flames of fire. His hair is white, like wool. It doesn't feel like wool. It doesn't look like wool. And if you touch it, you're touching life itself through the strands of his hair. He'll grab you and hold you. Because he loves you. He is our father, our original father. If you didn't have him that was very good, well, we'll let God decide what they're going to do with him. But God loves you. He has always loved you. You've always been in him. You have been from the beginning to the end before you were sent to the earth to be born. He knew you before you began to breathe. Because in heaven, you don't have to breathe. Isn't that amazing? Revelation is a powerful thing. Because you finally find out who you are. Who you are as his son, as his daughter. Who you are in the scope of all eternity. Who you are in the plans he has for you right now. Right now to walk on this earth. To be a blessing to him and for him. And he informs me, you don't do things for him. You do it with him. You do these things with him. No matter what it is he's asked you to do, he's right there with you because he cares about you. He only has wishes great things for you, believes greatness for you. It's always going to be great, even sometimes when it's hard, even sometimes when things happen you don't understand. You can still depend on him. You can trust him. You can believe him in the things his word is sad because he does care. This world needs to know God. They need to know Jesus Christ. He is the only way to heaven. The world called heaven is their home. And there's only one way to get there, and that is to receive the blood covenant of Jesus Christ. He paid a big price for you. He paid a price for anybody who will receive him to go there. Sometimes enemies become the best friends when they get there. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding at all. Because when you receive Christ and you have repented of all of your sins, all of them, that means even those things you did and said to people are wiped out. Make sure you're nice to your neighbor. They may live next door to you in heaven. If their dog barks a lot, get to know the dog. Because they'll be there too. Your pets all go to heaven. When God asked Noah to put the animals on the ark, he said, put every creature on the ark that has a spirit of life in them. That is their spirit and their soul. They have a spirit and a soul. They couldn't make decisions if they didn't. Our, our, our spirit. Our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. It's like our machine that lives inside of us. And we choose things, and when we choose them, then we will do them. And if we do them, we're going to display who and what we represent in this earth. Your animals are innocent. Your pets are innocent. They didn't fall in sin. That's why when they die, your angel takes them to heaven. And yes, they will live in your mansion, wait on you to get there. They'll meet all kinds of friends up there. We know that my, my sister Jen's pugs and our 
our our dachshund is best friends. They like, like to sit on the bench together, and they would talk to each other in dog language. In heaven, they don't use dog language. My dad has pets a mile long because with 15 kids, you had a lot of pets. I recognize every single one of them, all of them. And every time one dies, my dad yells down from heaven, ye gad, you send another one. I believe in the power of the living God. I believe in the blood covenant of Jesus Christ. I believe in the person of Holy Spirit who lives inside of me and sets me on fire for God, who shows me things to come, who explains mysteries to me, who gives me correction and direction and affection, who doesn't mind sharing even small things with you. If you can't find something, please ask him. Holy Spirit, you know where everything was that ever was, that is now and ever will be. Please show me where, whatever it is. Please show me where my wallet is. Please show me where my knife is. Please show me where my coat is. Please show me whatever it is that you need. And within a minute, he will show you a vision of where it actually is. And then you'll go find it. I lost the phone number. A pastor had called me. They wanted to invite me, and I couldn't find it. I remember it was on a scrap of paper. I remember looking at it, and I remembered the name, but I couldn't remember the, the phone number. So I said to one day, and I said, okay, Holy Spirit, you know where everything is, ever was, is, or will be. Please show me where that scrap of paper is. And out of my own being, that paper floated out. It flipped three times, landed on my desk, and Holy Spirit said, hurry up and write it down. I'm going to put it back in there. So all that stuff you look at and read and watch, guess where it is? Right in there. If it's stuff heaven wouldn't like, if they rated it rotten, loose it out of your soul, heaven will come down and take it out. That's called the keys to the kingdom. What you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. What you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. I bind the love of God, the life of God, the plans of God, his will, his way, his joy, his celebration, his expectation, his promises. I bind it to my soul, and nobody can take it away from me. If you've gone through a bad, traumatic experience, loose the entire experience. I don't care if it was 50 years ago. Loose that exact experience Loose it with the keys from the kingdom, from your soul, right then, and you're not going to have it anymore. It'll be gone in Jesus' name. They'll come down and take the whole thing out of your soul. It will be like it never happened, and you will live with joy and, and goodness the whole rest of your life. Remember, these are very important ways to live. You need to know the purpose of your soul. That's why he gave us a soul. No man can see his soul. I've seen a soul. It's pretty cool. It's going to be in my third book. You're going to see what a human soul looks like and why it's important to understand how it operates. What you see, what you watch, what you say yourself is recorded in your soul. If you don't like the way you feel about yourself, stop saying things against yourself. Don't do that. You put it at the gas station and someone's swearing up a storm or the window down saying, I lose it from my soul. <laughs> yes, I do that. My husband will shake his head right there for you. I'm not putting profanity. That, did you know that's hell's language? Hell speaks profanity, people. I have been there and seen it. Don't invite them, right? You don't want them around you, trust me. You evict everything, every word, sound, image, thought, frequency, entity, spirit of hell, out of your house, out of, out of your soul. You don't want to keep it in you. That'd probably be a good thing to do every now and then. Amen? Amen? Right now, before I go any further, <clears throat> how many people command heaven's army? How many people don't? How many people never have or never knew you could? Yes, you can. Jesus Christ did when he was on the earth. He was the Lord of hosts. Is that correct? When he was dragged before the Sanhedrin court, what did he say to them? Do people remember? Do you remember what he said? If I wanted to, I could command the army of heaven to come and set me free, deliver me and fight for me, and they would do it. 
You know, he's called the, he's, he's called, <laughs> he was, we know he was the king of glory. He was, he was God. He also was a man walking on this earth, just like we did. He was filled by God, but he still had to obey things and listen to things and learn things. And as that person, as Jesus Christ, he could command the host of heaven and he knew it. He was sin free on the earth. He was sin free completely because of who he was, why he was sent here. And the father himself contacted me and said, you're going to learn how to command the host of heaven because that's the reason why we made them. They were not made to protect heaven. They didn't never need to protect heaven. Did they fight for God's chosen people in the Old Testament? Yeah. Did one angel like kill 85,000? These are big guys we're talking about. These are spiritual beings. A one whole tribe has flesh. They're under Melchizedek. Melchizedek had no beginning nor end, no, mo no father, no mother, and he had flesh. Did you know that? Melchizedek had flesh on him. That's how Abraham could pay tithes to him because he could see him. So there are a whole group, a whole tribe of hosts that have flesh on them. Well, they're called special ops, and they, when they were sent down to the earth to fight on behalf of Israel, they came with flesh on their bodies. They could fight the flesh. You see how well God saw, thought everything out for us? So he did come in contact me, said, you're going to learn how to be a commander of the host. And he said, you will get, I start with 100. You get 100 of them. And you have to send them on assignments. And I'll tell you what the assignments are, but you have to send them because you are in the flesh. You have authority in this earth that is a flesh earth. Therefore, you have the right to command them to deal with the flesh and the spirit on this earth. And that's what you get. They will come and they will live over your home. They're not coming back to heaven as long as you're alive. They will serve you. They will go on assignment wherever you send them, however long you say to go, and do what you tell them to do. They will not go and knock out your neighbor's dog. They won't stop barking. That isn't going to happen. They're not going to knock out your neighbor either, no matter how bad they are. Don't try to do stupid things with them. They won't do it. And if you play with the darkness, they're going to know. They do not mess or do anything whatsoever. They will not do anything for you if you are not born again believer. That's what gives them the right to come. A scroll was open. In 2014, we stepped off of, of, of time, a step of time, into another step of time where the host of heaven would begin to fight on our behalf in reality. And I was caught up to heaven. When the Father told me that, I was caught up to heaven. I saw the whole event happen when this living scroll that had a face on it, before the throne of God he was brought to him, he opened it and it spoke those words. Now will you fulfill your destiny? with the humans on the earth that have received Jesus Christ as their Savior. Now you will be assigned to them. Now you will fight on their behalf whenever they ask you to do that. This is now official, and they stamped it. So I was taught how to command the host of heaven. And the minute the Father said that, he came in my room, in my encounter room. I have an encounter room in my home. He came in the room, and they, the ones who came looked like lions. They're called the royal guard. They walked through the wall of my home, one at a time, past me. They just walked through the wall, and when they were all in there, the father said, this is going to be your commander. This is her with the pink hair. They didn't crack a smile. When she says, I command the host of heaven to do this and that and this and that, then you will come and you will do whatever she says to do. You will live over her home. And that, that heaven right above that in the sky, the, you're going to live there. And he turned to me and said, you will see them in the sky. I can't tell you how many. I've seen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, sometimes thousands at a time. Thousands of them. And he was right. They live over my home. My husband has seen them many times. My mom has seen them. My sister has seen them. They have rescued us from accidents. They have kept us and protected us all every day of our life. You can have them do traffic, traffic control. No holdups, no delays, no breakdowns, no accidents, and no attacks of any kind any time is what you say to them. 100 of you this day will follow us all day long. 
And then we will assign you to our direct family members that you also go with them. And this is what you will do, what we said. And while you're out there doing that, you will speak to every person in every car and say, you need to know Jesus Christ. You need to be kind today, not be angry, not be terrified. You will wait for the love of God to flow into your car. And you would say that to every single person passing you down the road. If demons are on their car, please flick them off. <laughs> Being a seer, that was quite interesting that I had one host that was on my hood all the time. And any demons that were coming by, they would flick them really hard. It would toss them into the next county. <laughs> Does this sound like a normal life? <laughs> this is called heaven culture, people. Do you have power over all the power of the enemy? Some of it? All of it. Some of the time? Then what difference is if you're commanding the host of heaven that they were created to fight them? And that's what they do for you. They will fight them. Tonight, everybody's going to invite them. Is that okay with you? It didn't take the Father very long to teach me this. I had to just understand it, and then I did it. I have to do it. And let me tell you, when the army comes for you, and you will see them over your home eventually, it's just going to happen. Go outside and take a picture. Yeah, I'm telling you, I've got so many pictures, and I was going to try to bring some. Next time I come back, I'm going to have a flash drive. I'm going to plug in and show you a lot of them on the screens. Sometimes I'll have demons in chains. And you'll find out that the host, the army, isn't all like us. Gabriel's group is a lot like us. They look like a human. Michael's are not. They are creatures. Just like in Revelation 4, the living creatures that have eyes in their bodies and eyes in their wings. Those guys, sometimes they don't show up, but part of that tribe will show up in that group. So this is what you do. You get up in the morning and say, Father, I say, good morning, Father. Good morning, Jesus, my Savior, my King, my beloved. Good morning, Holy Spirit, my best friend. I have been given power over all the power of the enemy, and this day I'm going to take it. So I command the host of heaven to guard and protect and keep us in all of our ways. 10,000 of them in this city, all over this city, they will do that. They will put on every stronghold of Satan in this city. They will shred every platform and turn it into dust in the city because we're not putting up with hell here. And they start going to do it right away. And then I'll send them, I'll say, I'm sending another a million of you to the White House to begin to unearth and expose every wicked, evil person that's working there. Every ungodly criminal act that they say is a law that they made up that is a lie. I want every one of them exposed. I want people to see them, know who they are, know what they did, so they'll be part of that landslide of fraud exposure like never before in the years. Go now to D.C. and start doing it. Yeah. While you're there, if you see people that need really help, that are crying out to God for help, you can help them. You will help them, whether it's finances, whether it's food, whether it's a place to live, whether it's something else. You, will, you have the ability to help them because I'm giving you that permission to do that. But because they can't take authority over all the power of the enemy. They can't. We can. Jesus said, I give you power over all the power of the enemy, right? To tread upon you know, serpents and scorpions, right? To cast out devils. Is that right? And nothing by any means shall harm you. Did he give that to the host of heaven or to us? That's why you have to say, I take power over all the power of the enemy before you command them. They aren't going to do it themselves. They can't just say, oh, go over here and do that. They, you have to do that first. So remember that, okay? I have a CD called Invite Heaven's Army. It's only six bucks. You can get it online if they don't have any of those left. God said, I want the body of Christ to know about this so they will be, be protected and be kept their whole lives. And in these days coming, it'll be the number one way you stay alive. So, yes, they are waiting for you. Do not forget to send them on assignments. You may see them staring in your window. <laughs> I rarely forget, but every now and then I'll get up, I'll jump up and just run out and start doing stuff. And I'll look up and there's like three of them staring, their big eyeballs in my window. And I know what they're thinking. Are we going somewhere today? Because they have personalities too, not just the people. 
Some are funny, some are not funny, some are like they want all hellfire and brimstone cast on the evil and the wicked people and drag them down to hell right now. Then you have the funny guys who make jokes about everything. My two scribe angels that help me write my books, one is funny, one is the other. So I get both of these. They, they choose all the titles from my, my, my book, in my book, the chapter titles. Some that are talking about, you know, what, what's going on in hell and what God's going to do with them, what will be their end. That was the one. That was the one. Who's like, you know, I'm going to get them. They're going to get burned up. That's what they're going to do. I'm not tolerating this. I don't know how you can put up with it. I'm not going to tolerate it. They're just going to go out and I'm going to waste them. <laughs> he sounds like my brother, RJ. <laughs> the other one's like laughing like, oh, no, you know, you have authority. Jesus already wiped that up. He's already done all that stuff like that. You just have to ask us, what do you want us to do? What do you want us to do? And so I will, I will just sometimes, they don't get assignments very much except give me the chapter titles quicker. So now I'm writing book three, and I don't want to wait forever to get those chapters. Give me, I have all of the 24 chapter titles already. You'll see a human soul. you see the third day in hell when Christ wiped out hell, took the keys of hell, death in the grave, and then exited hell. You're going to see that in that book. You're going to get to see that. You're going to see places in heaven I haven't told anybody about yet. You're going to see parts of the future. What will it look like when the glory of God covers you and you send it out in shock waves? What's going to happen to this earth? What's going to happen to your city? Regions of light, regions of darkness one day will be on this earth. We're going to be a big part of his plan. You're not just sitting on a shelf somewhere. You are his sons and daughters. He expects you to be a part, say, Father. I want to be a part of the plans you have for me in these days. Amen. Amen. So you have, you have not, you ask not. The healings that are going to, Joan's going to be so busy. The mass, mass healings, I'm telling her, mass healings, mass healings, bigger than Azusa Street, mass healings, mass amounts of money. That wealth is laid up. You know how you know how rich the wicked are. They saving it up for us. Amen. Say amen. amen. God has plans for the greatness that's going to hit this earth. He's going to erase the gray area that says there is no God, and everyone will know there is a God. And then they'll have to pick: Are we going to pick the darkness, or are we going to pick the light? Is it going to pick death or pick life? Say, choose life. Choose life. That's the best one. I don't know what time. Is that the time up there? I'm just watching those pretty orange numbers just go by. I'm not very aware of time. They don't have time in heaven. No, they just yell out. If there's an event going on, they have a lot of events everywhere in heaven. People have their own events in heaven just to bless people who, are, who live there. And you just know immediately where it is and how to get there and everything. You don't have to run around. You're not going to get a, an email or a text, okay? They don't have a telephone. You say something to whoever you want to hear, and they hear it wherever they are in heaven. And then they'll answer, and then you'll hear them. It's a wonderful life, and it's real. God doesn't deal in fake or deception. Deception will destroy you. Don't lose your joy. The joy of the Lord is your what? And laughter is what? Then you better keep it. If someone tries to steal it from you by the way they treated you, turn around right in front of them and go, Father, I just lose all those words from my soul. They just spoke. I'm not keeping them, so I'm just giving them up. Let heaven come and take them. I'm using the keys to the kingdom. And while you're at it, give me some love for that person who just trashed me. <laughs> then turn around and go, hey, would you like to get coffee in the donut? And then they'll run from you because they'll think you're nuts. <laughs> it's fun being a Christian sometimes. When you believe, don't stop believing. Don't give up. I love her shirt. I love that shirt. Don't ever give up. 
It's going to be worth everything when you get to the end because you do win. We do win. We've already won. Say we've already won. We just have to walk it out. Is that right? So mass raising of the dead is coming. Mass salvations for well, I can just mass salvations for those who are not living the right lifestyle is coming. And body parts will be replaced when they get saved. So all that work they thought they could change to be something else was for nothing. Mass salvations for Muslims is coming. Mass salvations. Mass, mass, you know, mass healings and mass salvations are coming in many places. I love uh, Robin Bullock when he talks about the soul train, sings the soul train, about the days that are going to be happening and stuff like that. He's got a real good revelation of that too. If you believe and do not doubt in your heart, you should have what? Whatsoever you say. So what your whole life really, what it is formed on and runs on is what you believe with Jesus Christ, what you say to him, what you trust him with, what a part of the word are you reading? Please read the word of God. That's what, God, that's what Jesus had to give us an answer when he was tempted by Satan. Remember that? Did it work? Then remember that. We have been given authority like wild by him. Are we made in his image and after his likeness? Do you know that's how they operate? Likeness is how they operate. So we were made to operate like them. We're not them, but we are related to them. So don't ever give up. So Father, right now, I just thank you for this night. I thank you for the host of heaven who are present here right now, God. I thank you for everybody's angels that are here with them, God. I bless them in the name of the Lord. Make sure they all get cupcakes. The angels. <laughs> they like cupcakes, people. <laughs> I blame that on Jesus. He started giving them before I said to give them to him. Do not think that anything is impossible with God. He wants to bless you more than you want to be blessed. He loves each and every person here. He wants you whole, not just healed, whole like it never happened. To run your race, not crawl it. Run your race. And then one day we'll be flying it. I've already experienced walking on air. That feels very different. I didn't know I was doing it, but I was. My sister saw me. I would have fallen right flat on my face, but I'd already said I'll never fall again in Jesus' name. Host of heaven, if you have to lift me up, I'm not falling, because I had fallen several times and gotten hurt. And I would have fallen if I, if I hadn't. I walked right off the corner of something that was really high up, didn't notice, and I was just walking in air. I didn't know I was walking in air. My sister goes, you're floating. I went, no, I'm not floating. I just laughed at her. Yes, you are floating right now in air. I said, no, I'd already gone like 20 feet. And she said, look down. I went, ah! <laughs> that was great faith, wasn't it? <laughs> and I said, this is pretty cool. Is this like when Jesus walked on the sea? He goes, no, he could feel the sea. You're walking on air. That's a greater work. That's what's coming to the body of Christ. So then I just went straight down, down, just very softly, down to the floor. And I'm like, amazing. It was just amazing what God did for God and blessed me with. So guess what's coming? Don't practice without him helping you. <laughs> Don't get your Superman cape on and jump off the second story. Do not do that. Unless your angel's holding you right. <laughs> so I know I can't keep staying here talking to y'all, but I just I really love sharing truth and revelation from God. Revelation is coming in great detail. Thank goodness that John didn't mind sharing it, right? 
because Paul didn't want to. <laughs> I knew a man. It was him. <laughs> it was called up to heaven. I knew a man himself who was caught up and saw great things and couldn't speak of it. Of course, I understand how many years ago that happened. That there probably was nothing on the earth at that time that would even resemble it. And they, they, well, it wouldn't do any good anyway. They couldn't, you know. Well, John, they never could kill him. So they sent him to the Isle of Patmos where he had all the free time with Jesus he wanted. I love that it says he was on the, he was in the, he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. I love that. It's a place that you can go to that's still here. It's all around you. That's why he saw the door open in heaven. He heard the voice come up. And I love it that he was shown the Father on the throne. Because in the book of John, he said, no one can see the face of God and live. So God was going to make sure he corrected that. So on the Isle of Patmos, when he was sent there, God corrected it. After that, he never said that. Because he knew you could see the face of God and live. Because he did. He saw the rainbow flowing from him. That is the Father's image. That's not Jesus' image. That's not Holy Spirit's image, okay? The Holy Spirit is filled with, filled with fire. He has a lot of fire around him, in him. And it outlines all of his whole being. Jesus Christ, we know what his is, right? We know the glory of God, fire in his eyes, the marks in his palm of his hand, the, the, his, the hand in the side, you know, his feet. Those are his and the greatest love you'll ever feel. But the Father, that is his rainbow. And John saw it. And then when he didn't say, oh, I don't believe you, <laughs> let him take me back. He said he wanted to know what else he had. Then he showed him what was to come. And showed in the book of Revelation, which most people don't understand, but that's what Revelation is. Things that ha usually have not happened yet. They would get you undone, no matter what they are, but... But those things will still happen. They're going to happen, but not yet. The end is not yet. If you ever want to know, he hears from the Father, the end is not yet. Aren't you glad? I'm glad. We don't miss the best part. You get to live the best part. So get yourself in shape. Get excited. Get a notebook and start writing things down that the Father is telling you. If he showed you something 30 years ago and it hasn't happened yet, it doesn't mean it won't happen. He showed me things 50 years ago and 30 years ago and 10 years ago. Those 10 years and those other years have happened. The 50 years haven't happened yet, but they will. And no one will ever convince me they won't because I know they will. And it has a lot to do with the wealth and the things that we will build and create for this earth, that they need those things. Things that will help people that are dying, that are starving, that, that need water. Well, manifest this hundred dollars, just stand there, not even have to drill. Command the water to come up in the form of a well and make a well by your words, and that will happen. Won't that be quicker? Those things will happen. You learn how to step, one step into the spirit, and no one will see you. You can walk through them. That's what Jesus did. And they're going to throw him off the mountain. Do you know what they believe over there? That he had a rope down the side of the mountain. Because I met the tour guide that was telling people that. But I was given permission to share any revelation about what he was saying. I said, excuse me, can I say something? He goes, <laughs> I said, Jesus Christ did not have a rope down the side of the mountain. He didn't know, need one. It says he stepped into the spirit and walked through the people. It didn't say around the people. He walked through their bodies because the spirit realm supersedes the natural realm, and he just went that way. And everybody's like, yay! <laughs> Guess what you're going to be doing one day? Stepping into the spirit, not being seen, and God will supernaturally take you somewhere. No airline ticket. No airlines, no baggage claim, no baggage. You'll just be where he needs you to be. You'll speak probably right on a platform when you're done with that and the thing has happened when he's done, you just step back in the spirit and he'll take you back. Isn't that a better life? We're about to have a lot of signs and wonders. Amen? So stand up, please.
Father, we take you, we thank you for this awesome night, God. We thank you for the life that you've given us. You, you timed our birth on this earth. For some of the best days, God, the best times for not just us, but our families and generations coming after us, God, that we'll be able to train them and show them who he is. Jesus Christ, who he is, what his plans are for us, why we belong to him because of his blood, because of his sacrifice, to help show this world who he is, to let them know who Jesus Christ is, because he died for everyone. Amen? He says he desires even the vilest sinner to be free. That would be hard to believe. But he already paid that price. And one thing that is about to happen is some very wicked people are about to get saved. And they become the best witnesses and have the best testimonies. God doesn't want them to just go burn up in hell. He wants to use them as a witness and a testimony to the power and saving grace of the living God. So I'm going to ask people there now. Let's right now, I know we got saved last night. We're going to do it again. Do you mind doing it? Say, Father, Father. I thank you for the sacrifice your son has made. I choose with my will to repent of every sin, every sin I have ever committed in any way. I give myself to Jesus Christ, and I thank him for forgiveness, to wash away my sins and fill myself with himself. I thank you, Father. It is an awesome price to pay that our Lord was willing to pay. And because of the price he paid, we understand that we have power over all the power of the enemy, and we have the right to command the host of heaven. So this moment in my life, as a born-again believer with a blood covenant, I'm inviting heaven's army to be under my command right now in Jesus' name. I thank you for sending them. I thank you, Father, for creating the host of heaven, the tribes who fight for us against the evil and all the darkness to keep and protect us in all our ways every day. So this moment, I take power over all the power of the enemy. And I command the host of heaven to go to my home and pull down every stronghold of Satan, shred every platform that has been built against me and my family, to evict from my home any demonic of any kind whatsoever. I will no longer tolerate them nor will I listen to them. They are a doormat under my feet. I thank you, host of heaven, that I send you to my families all over this world, wherever they're living. Pull down every stronghold of Satan that's involved in their life. Open their eyes to know the truth, that they will know Jesus Christ as their Savior and be in heaven with me for eternity. I thank you, host of heaven, to go now and make burnt toast of hell in my family's lives, no matter where they're living. Bring back the lost. Pursue those who've abandoned Jesus Christ, that they might know the truth about him. In Jesus' holy name, so be it. Amen. 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 So I'm going to teach you the traffic control now. You've got to, got to remember this, okay? So tomorrow when you wake up, or you can do it right now because you haven't done it yet, say, I take power, I take power. Over, all the power over all the power of the enemy and command the host of heaven, of heaven. that are assigned to me 
to do traffic control for me and my family in the land, the sea, and the air. There will be no holdups, no delays, no breakdowns, no accidents, and no attacks of any kind at any time. Go host, make toast. Woohoo! Here you go. You can sit down. Do you remember when the disciple kept asking Jesus to remove the thorn of flesh from him that was from Satan? Remember that? Do you know what he said? My grace is sufficient for the day for the evil thereof. And guess what? He quit asking him because he learned something. That grace, that grace that Jesus was talking about, that grace for abundant life, that grace you need to get up in the morning every day and say, Father, I ask for, let's say it, Father, I ask for and receive grace for this day. Amen. Now, even though I just did that, I literally felt fuel from heaven pouring into my being. It's fuel from heaven. You have it because you ask for that grace. That's what Jesus was teaching them all. Do you know there's a scripture in the Bible that says, the father said these words, as a child, I filled my son with my grace. That's why people come before his throne of grace to find help and grace in time of need. That's the father's throne. The father has this grace. He filled his son with it. It's one of the reasons why he made it on the earth, having to live here with humans. He walked in that grace. But you know what that scripture said, right? What he said, it is sufficient for the day, for the evil thereof, the day. This isn't getting saved every day. This is you every day asking for that grace that Jesus told that disciple, you don't need to do it. You don't need to have me come and kick Satan out. You don't need me to beat him up. You get that grace that is sufficient for the day for the evil thereof that's coming against you, no matter what it is, make sure. We actually have uh, like a little tent card that said, "Ask for, for remember to ask for grace. And then it says those words that I just said. But it's something you do. Your words are powerful. Make sure you ask for that grace before you do it. Open your eyes and ask for grace. <laughs> because if you get up and run out and you don't have that grace, you're not going to be very nice. <laughs> In my family, we've learned to do this. Get back in your room and get the grace. <laughs> if you're out there and you're complaining about everything and, and pointing fingers at people, and they go, where is your grace? Now, let's say that to me. I'll be right back. <laughs> Usually, I'll just turn around and say, oh, Father, I asked for and received grace for this day. Please forgive me for not asking. And then the fuel comes in. The fuel comes in. It will change you. My mama would go visit. Her mom was 100 years old. She went to see her like many, many months before she passed away. And she did ask God, please let me be there. Anyone who's willing to have 15 kids for God deserves to ask for something. <laughs> please let me be present when my mom passes. I really want to be there. Guess what? She was. I was in Jacksonville, Florida. And my mom called. She said, I think my mom's going to go today. And Jesus said, she is going today. Because her husband, when he passed away, was want, always wanted to be a gardener, and guess what he is? He's a florist in heaven. And then God opened my eyes, and I saw him pay, taking a five-foot flower arrangement, putting it in my grandmother's mansion in heaven, and the flowers were going to sing to her when she came home. I said, you're right, Mama. Uh, let me know what's going on. So she started telling me each day what was going on. She called me one day. She said, well, she doesn't want to wake up. She's still sleeping, but she's not in pain. And I said, well, there's four angels in her room right now standing in the corner. Four angels are waiting to take her. And my mom goes, well, well, they, they can't take her yet because in, in Arizona, if you pass away, they do an autopsy on the person if they didn't have someone present, like, you know, a rescue squad or something like that. I said, well, okay. And I said, well, your mom just stepped out of her body. She said, well, she needs to get back in. <laughs> She sounded like her own mama. My, 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 my grandma would say things like that. 
<laughs> she said, you know, you need to get back in that body. You can't go yet. You, you need to be here because the rescue was on the way to check her. And if she still had a pulse, they would say everything was okay. So they were showing up outside the door. So she, my grandmother looked in her 20s. I saw her from Florida all the way in Arizona. I said, well, the angels are right there with her. She's right there, but she's moving towards her body. <laughs> so before the guy came in the door, my grandmother stepped in her body. She wouldn't even lay down in it. That old wrinkle thing, <laughs> over 100 years old, she went about to get in that body. She is feeling really good. And she kept going like this, I have no wrinkles, I have no wrinkles, I have no wrinkles. <laughs> and my mom's, so all of a sudden, uh, she didn't open her eyes or nothing, but they came over and they tested her. They went, we can barely hear it because she was only standing in her body. But she's got a pulse. We'll wait to see if she goes. We'll wait. So they waited 15 minutes. And when they went out the door, she stepped back out of her body again, like, yay. <laughs> and they, they came back and tested her. And they went, well, she's gone. But you're all okay. There will be no autopsy. So the rescue left, and I told my mom, I said, Mom, go, go to the right-hand corner of your room and look up and say goodbye to your mom because she's standing right there. And I know when she walked up, walked up to my grandma when she was standing in her body, and the, and the guy had walked out right before she stepped out of her body. She said, oh, Mom, I want you to know I love you so much. You know, I'm, I'm glad you're going to heaven, but I love you so much. And I heard my grandma say to her, Oh, honey. That was what she always said to her, oh, honey. And I told my mom, and said, she just said, oh, honey. And my mom goes, that's what she always said to me. I said, then get over in the corner and wave goodbye and tell her you love her. And God wants you to know two of the angels are going with her. The other two will stay until your brother gets saved. He's in heaven right now. Because he got, he, he became very sick. And I told mama, I said, remember, she said that God said that he would not take your mom until your brother was ready to receive Christ. So he did bless my mom. But she did go over there and blow kisses at my grandma. She's the happiest mourner the, the church there ever saw, you know, because my grandma did a lot for them. And she was over 100 years old. And my uncle didn't want her to die. And my mom said, it's okay. I'm so excited for her. She was like happy. And they're like, what is wrong with you? And they said, well, we need someone to come down to the morgue to identify her, even though they, they, they sent her down there. My uncle could not go see her. My mom said, I'll go see her. It'll be okay. It's all going to be fine. Because she was celebrating that she was in heaven. <laughs> so my mom went and identified her mom. Yep, that's her. She's really happy. She's in heaven right now. So at least my uncle didn't have to do that. But it probably wasn't very long after that. Several months later after that, he passed away. But guess where he is? In heaven. So God bless my mama. She got to be there when she passed. He kept his promise to her. And now her brother's in heaven also. Her dad got saved when they lived in the, um, one of those really nice, swanky, what do they call those? Where the, age, the aged, the aged, not the ancient, <laughs> where the seniors go to live. A, a senior living, yeah. A really nice senior living. And my grandpa loved to eat. And so he would go, he would go to every meal they had, and he, he heard somehow they were going to have church. They had church every Sunday in the senior living place by the Baptist people. Thank God for the Baptists. And he thought he was going to eat dinner. And there was the Baptist minister there, and he goes, well, I guess I better do it. So he got saved. He served the food. He fell over in his food and died and went to heaven. <laughs> Who cares as long as he goes to heaven, people? Well, I like the train. You know what God told me? The, the money train has left heaven. <laughs> woo woo! Woo woo! Here it comes. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> Father, we thank you for that money train. Let's just see it. You, you need to make declarations to him, okay? What you dare to declare and decree shall. Be established unto you. So everybody say this, Father, Father Jesus, Christ, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit we, thank we thank you for the money train coming from heaven. Make sure it comes by my way, and I don't miss what you've got for me. I receive it. I'll use it for you. I am blessed by your love for me. 
I trust you. I expect to receive it. I have a blood covenant with Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Woo-hoo! So I had asked the Father, what did you want me to teach him? He said, teach them how to command the host of heaven. It's your right. As a believer, it's your right. Healing and wholeness is your right. Joy and happiness is is your right. Life eternal is your right. You need to know what your rights are. You're special people. You're not just flesh people anymore. You're supernatural people with the DNA of God on the inside of you. He makes master plans for those who believe him, who follow and believe his son, Jesus Christ. He makes plans for you. Say, I want those plans. Please give me clarity so I understand. I'm going to enjoy heaven, but right now I'm still here. I want to make a difference. I want to change history in this world to know there is a God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Woo! So I think I'm done. Oh, what is this? Oh, yes, thank you for telling me I forgot about the offering. Even with the money train. And I'm going to give, too. I don't remember what it's up now. I'm going to, I'll probably, do I give to you online? Can I give it to you online? Okay, I'll do that. I love to give. I've always been a big giver. And I realize, and I tell people, you know, like she was saying, whoever feeds you, whoever feeds you and gets you closer to God and gets understanding for you for them, that's who your pastor is. That's who's feeding your soul. I tithe. And God is happy I tied, and it has opened doors and windows and gates for me in so many ways I cannot share all of them with you because I give. I choose to give. It's a delight to give. I love to give. Everybody in heaven, if they could come back, they wouldn't stop giving. It's important. Do you know that's part of honoring Christ? That's a way to worship Christ is by giving your offerings. You know, you give 10%, but you know, you get a whole lot more when you give the 10% than when you don't give any. He can turn that into a more of a 90% or more. I love what she said about the thousand-fold return. God's had me declare thousand-fold returns over people's lives, and yes, I'm going to do it today. I could spend 30 minutes talking to you about money or just say, give it. (laughs) If you want to be blessed, just give it. I know you could have 50 hot fudge Sundays, but just think, you won't have the weight gain and you'll be able to have the sweets of heaven because you've given. (laughs) We still live here on the earth, people. And I can tell you, it costs big money to do things. It does today because of the B person who has tried to take over the White House. It costs even more. That's going to change. Because in this now time of God, it would be God's time, and his person will be in the White House. And I love everybody, and everybody gets to make choices. Some people just make really bad ones. And if they're selfish and don't care, they make even worse ones. If they get bought out by wicked, evil people, they make even worse ones. And then they don't make any except bad ones on purpose. Everybody keeps saying, when is it going to get better? Not when that's still there. They don't want to be good. They are consumed with evil. And I'm not just talking about the evil person. A lot of people under him, around him, people overseas that have bought them out. They are wicked and evil because you don't kill, steal, and destroy when you feel like it. You're supposed to give life and life more abundantly. You're supposed to help people, love people, and care about people. They don't care about anybody. And that whole January 6th thing is a lie. Everybody say, January 6th is a lie. It all needs to be exposed. We live by truth in this country. That's why we live here. 
and the truth is going to be known. Whether anybody wants to be known, God's going to make sure it is known. So have your eyes open. Stop listening to the fake news who can't stop giving fake news. Why do you think it's called fake? It's not true. And they're being paid to give it. I know people who used to do it, and they were paid. Thank God they changed before they realized that the whole end of this whole thing was for Satan to take over. Because they were living by those principles, not the principles God gave us. We're here to care, help, and make a difference, not to kill, steal, and destroy. Satan's MO, kill, steal, destroy. Is that correct? Why do they think anybody under him, around him, would do any different? And what they're doing is wrong, and they are actually asking people to commit criminal acts. And that's wrong. You don't run a country that you weren't chosen and voted in. You want to take over because you want to rule. Because in America, it is for we the people who live here, who have sold their whole life into this place, died, family members died to save this place, to keep this place, to make it safe. There is no safety. They don't want the police to be here. They don't want them to do right things. They have hired criminal people to be their security. And they have put razor wire around the place that used to be a good place to go and visit. I was just there. And whatever they think they can get away with, Satan does what he thinks he can get away with. He wants this country now. And it's too bad. Kick devil butt because he ain't getting it. And I, oh, I tell people all the time I'm, when I'm broadcasting on my own, my own thing, I would tell people, before it's too late, all you have been wicked out there, it isn't about being Democrat or Republican. It's what is in your heart, what you've chosen to do, and you think it's okay and you know it's not. Or you wouldn't be trying to hide it from your own family. So you need to get yourself right, repent to God for what you've been doing before it's too late, and you end up in hell with the one who's over all the stuff, and he won't give you any treasures. You don't only not get breakfast in hell, you don't have a life in hell. You want to live your life the right way God designed life to operate, and that is to help one another, care about one another. So before it's too late to do anything about that, please decide to do it before it is too late for you. And you leave behind your family who did no wrong. You can't blame people and their whole family if their family had nothing to do with it. Please don't do that. I pray for families of these people. They know what they're doing is wrong, and they don't care. So that is they want to have no free America. Well, guess what? It's too late. America is free. It was made free. God's name is on our papers. It's on our money. And God is involved in this country. And he's about to change a lot of things in this country. So everybody say amen. amen. We pray for the lost. For the lost. Even the wicked and the evil. The and that their eyes will be open. And they will start actually doing things the way the Constitution says to do them. Stop changing the laws to be illegal. Stop hurting our children. Stop defiling the crops. Stop taking our property. Stop spending our money. Stop making decisions that are harmful. Open your eyes and know the truth. And go to Jesus Christ that you can be free in Jesus' name because this country is going on with God. We declare to be so. Amen. Amen. So we're going to take up the offering. How about that? I think she has, you have stuff. Okay, it's going to come up over here. Father, I pray for everybody here, God, what they have decided in their heart to give. 
God, what you've showed them to give, Father, because if you ask them to give it, it's going to be powerful. And I thank you for multiplying even what they do give a thousand times. Thank you, God, multiplying not just their money, their self, what they have given God, but multiply their property they own, the place that they live, the jobs that they have, the positions that they're in right now, even spiritual positions, God, that you're opening the windows of heaven to pour that out for them. Give them witty ideas not even on this earth yet, God. Great inventions that this world needs to have, Father. Remember them because they have remembered you in their giving. In Jesus' holy name, and everybody says amen. amen. Thank you for being here tonight. Amen. Amen. Remember, don't give up. It's time to run forward. This is a time of acceleration in God, in your lives, in your future. We belong to the most high God of heaven and earth, and there's none higher than them. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Elohim.